now to make it more nicer and more light light let's insert the other component which is the our cars hopefully it's still there not the installed so the truck is still there but the truck must be removed or yeah okay, it's still there Leader I was hoping it's not stolen, but still there, so let's rotate. Let's just rotate it by 90 degrees. Move it to the other position. Make it more active. Let's go to the elevation view to adjust the elevation of the car here you can see it's on the level one because when you're using level one clothing you can use a work tank or set the work tank this level later I will show you let's put this from here to this let's say 515 so it's almost touching the ground so it's just nicely touching the ground, so let's do the 3D. So it's nice. You see that our marking is okay, can be considered okay and correct. A nice view of the car. Now we're going to do a marking here, going up into the inclined surface or floor. So here we're going to use this. And go to architect and set as our can I so now we need to let's see first we, uh, we can set the work link part of this. This is the first time I'm trying it, so I'm not really sure how it will end up. So I'm hoping it will be the same method, but let's try and see first. Now we're going to continue to apply some road markings in the inclined straight road. Uh, we're going to do it until this point because this curved road, uh, if we apply this method, it's not really going to work. So if you have a straight inclined plane and you want to do it easy and fast you can use this method so let's go here and here we're going to set the peak lapping plane peak discipline means that you're working in this work plane. so let's go to the side let's create some model line for the center of the road so that we can place the so we have set let's set it again the plane let's pick pick the set as yes we have picked the plane but unfortunately the model to not be seen so let's try it again And now you can see it. Uh, let's create the model line again, rectangle, and let's use 150 by 1 meter. Let's change this to 150. And let's change, change this to 1 meter. That's okay. Now let's move this. Let's select the the problem with this is you cannot select the middle point, so let's move. Select the middle point, drop to the then here. We can only do one marking here because it's going to be a separate plane. So let's use it and then we're going to adjust from here and move this to align. 
So here we're going to do and use the split face tool. Select the outside. Create the rectangle using our reference. Apply. Now we're going to use the paint tool. Select yellow. Select inside the rectangle. Now you have done the first one. We're going to do another one. Let's escape from here. And from here, we need to set again the... Because this is a different level and this is a different level. So it will be on a separate work plane. So let's set the work plane again. Pick a plane. Put a key. Select this area. Now when we set here, you can see that the work plane has been highlighted. So we are going to work within this highlighted area. Let's see until the boundary is under this line, so we can work on it. Now we need to create another motor line, which is the center. We can work until here. So let's start with the rectangle here. Let's place a motor line, which is about 1 meter. Okay, that will be our reference point. So let's create another rectangle. We can set the dimensions to 150. Let's assume this is 100. Okay. Now we're going to raise this. Copy this with a 1 meter distance. Copy. Here, let's use this as our reference. Now we're going to have this distance. Use the multiply dimension from here to here. So let's choose this double click here. You can change the dimension later. So it's about 1 meter by 12. 1 meter and 12 and up, so let's just use it as it is first. Copy, this will be our reference. Select the next point, select the next point until we reach the end of the line. Here you cannot place it, but we cannot cut through here, so this is the last line that we can place on this inclined surface. Let's remove this. Now let's use the split face tool, pick speed, pick the face, and then redraw the rectangle of the rather than picking the lines, it will be much easier to do it again. Click finish. So I think I yes, so let's split face. You only need to do one, then you will have to copy it. Okay, then let's copy this. Copy. We have our reference point, so we can place it here. Our next rectangle. We have split the face of this area in an inclined row. Now we're going to use the paint tool again. Click yellow. Select on the inside of the rectangle so this is the easiest method I could find as of now using in a straight row and also in this inclined row as long as it's a linear or continuous row uh, on the curve row I will show you later how to do it, but at least you know the concept on how to do the markings on this uh, inclined, continuous inclined pole. So let's move this closer. So let's move this a little bit so it can be nicer and cool. So let's move again. The distance is 500 and this will be 1 meter, so that is the difference. 
So basically, that's how to do the road marking in a straight inclined road using the speed phase 2 and paint method. Thank you.